All right. Hey, folks, welcome back to another This Week in Photo Twip Pro Critique. Twip Pro Critique number two starts now. This is Twip. All right, folks, uh, this is going to be interesting. I'm joined here by two amazing photographers, Mr. Troy Miller and Mr. Steve Brazel. Hey, gentlemen, welcome to the show. What's up, buddy? Howdy, howdy. Howdy, howdy. All right. We are, you guys see my slick little intro there? Did you see that? Yeah. See how I pulled nice. that off? You see me? I was, yeah. I was driving to that a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, you know that that little simple five second sequence has been like like flogging right <laughs> it's, it has been me walking over hot coals trying to figure this thing out but i think we're close we're well close. I, I, that worked that, it that worked, went right? that went it's, seamless it's the first time that i know of it went completely seamless well done don't, don't rock the boat man don't don't rock the boat all right folks that are watching thanks for tuning in thanks for uh jumping onto this live stream i see people are piling in or jumping in there's a couple people in live chat right now and you know honestly we're doing this live this is what we're going to be doing for most of the This Week in Photos going forward, including the critiques and the twip talks and those sorts of things. This one is the first one that I did that sort of waiting scene and all that, you know, and the, the opening animation. And that's a way, so the reason I didn't promote this is because I didn't want to fail in front of too many people. <laughs> so, so, you know, I wanted to keep the audience limited just in case, uh, you know, things didn't work out right. But but here we are so what we're going to do today guys let's just jump right into it this is a critique session like i said in the little intro there and uh we're going to dive into the twip pro community into the photo critique channel in there i'm going to screen share it in just one second here so let me bring that up uh screen share okay so we'll bring up the the twip pro community you guys see that okay Sure do. do. All right. So here we are. We're in here. And basically, the way that these sessions are going to go, we're just going to step through the most recent submissions in here. And the, the first one, we're going to talk about it. We all agreed to, well, we've all said off camera that we haven't really made any notes about these. So these comments that you're going to hear are sort of off the cuff and initial impression, which is, I think, what you want for the most part from a from a, photo a photographic standpoint or, or an artist standpoint. You want people's fresh, the freshest opinions you can get. So let's start with this first one. Uh, let's load that in. And like I said, this is from TWIP Pro member Kyle Nishioka. Mr. Nishioka, thanks for submitting this. So let's dive right in. I'll, I'll let you guys just go for it. Steve Brazel, you haven't been on a critique session before. Let's, let's start with you. What do you. What do you think of this image? What are your first impressions? Well, first of all, I love the idea of the fire painting and the fact that they they went with some depth by having the fire out in front and the subject in back. Uh, I can see the subject in detail, lit really nice. A couple of things I think that the maker could do to, to lift this image kind of up to the next level and really give it more impact. There is a lot of space on the left and on the top that just really isn't adding to the image. I think if you cropped it from the upper left corner down, bringing it in tighter towards the flame on both the left and the right, it would add a little bit more impact to it. I don't mind the space on the right because that's where the person is looking. So I, I don't yeah. mind taking this fire and kind of moving it left in the composition <clears throat> and bringing the top down. The other thing that really struck me, and, and this is the one thing I think is probably tough with fire painting, but she's not super sharp. She is soft. Mm. Um, so I'd love to see her eyes with that facial expression and that light be a little more tack sharp. But I, I like what the maker was doing with it. It almost looks like initials. I was yeah. going to say that. I'm not sure. I, I hope uh, Mr. Nishioka can comment on this in the in the uh, the comments that go along with this image. But I'm uh, I'm curious because it looks like what CW or CMW or I, I was or, thinking it was like a C on the outside and an M in the middle, almost like a person's photo logo, I, it, which would yeah. be awesome. 
<laughs> no, totally. Or it could be it a could pretzel. Be now. I don't know. <laughs> a fiery pretzel. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, what about you, Troy? What do you think? I, you know, anything with fire, I love. So this is this is really <laughs> spectacular. Um, I have it big on my other screen over here, so I'm looking at it nice and close. Everything that Steve said is absolutely right. I, I would just say in situations like this, try to frame a little bit bigger and then crop in because we're missing the bottom part of the flame and her feet and legs. And I would love to be able to see the whole context of that. And then you can always you can always crop in a little bit, but timing spectacular. Her being framed in the fire is, is awesome. Um, the, the, the fire, the detail and the fire streaks themselves are fantastic. So this is, this is well done. This is something that I'd like to see more of this particular series and see how it, how it, you know, worked itself out. Yeah. And from a, from a, a pyro photographer standpoint, how, how hard is something like this to do? Fire is tough because, um, you know, you need to, in this case, he needs a long exposure to be able to capture all of that. And then to get the detail within the fire and then fire tends to overexpose because it's bright and it's orange. Uh, reds tend to overexpose a lot. So it's a challenge. I mean, fire is just not as easy as it, well, as it looks. And let's add in the fact that this fire is beautifully exposed, but she's not underexposed. So he yeah. managed to get a human face and body and even the legs are nicely lit up again. I agree with Troy. I wish I could see the feet, but it's really hard to get a person that close to this fire and have both of them exposed. So my question is for him is, was this something that you staged and you were prepared for this? Or was this something you went to the event and this is photojournalistic and you just, yeah. this is what you captured when you were there because that, that can make a big difference. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm curious. I mean, uh, clearly, I mean, do you guys you guys agree that he probably popped a flash on her to yeah. get that exposure or is that that's not firelight, right? No, no, that's flash. Yeah. Yeah. So, Troy, there's some tips for people to do this, this kind of photography or any kind of photography involving fire so that it ends nicely. What, what, what are some, <laughs> some tips? <laughs> Don't get burned, kids. Don't yeah. get burned. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so um, it doesn't end in skin grass from your butt, right? So, oh gosh, getting burned is bad. Um, and you've done it a lot. I have, I have actually, I have. Um, you know, this is one of those kind of things where you have to shoot a lot and you have to practice and you have to experiment and you have to think about all those rules of, you know, depth of field and aperture, um, you know, your ISO, your shutter speed. What do you want to capture? You know, a lot of times when I shoot fire, like I just posted an image that uh, is like a two second exposure of a small propane explosion. And it took me forever to figure that out. I couldn't tell you how to go do it. You just have to go through all those rules that you've learned as a photographer in practice. Um, but it's a, it's a long exposure. All the same things apply. Yeah. And actually that's okay. in the TWIP Pro, isn't it? Under member photos? Yeah, uh, this is. Posted, yeah. No, the one Troy yeah. was talking about, he posted it today. Oh, 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 the one, yeah, the one that I, I put a little fire like icon underneath. Yeah, well, that was cool. I love it. Cool. All right, guys, let's move on to uh, the second image. Thanks again to Kyle Nishioka for this. This yeah. next one is from Howard. Uh, and I'll go ahead and screen share this one as well. Uh, let's see. For some, This must be a giant image because it's taking it forever to load on my screen. I don't know. It's what high resolution. I, I, I looked at it, actually. Yeah. Did you? Did yeah, you? It's yeah. It's very high resolution. Yeah. That's why it's loading. Um, here we go. All right. Let's start with you, Troy. What do you think? You know, I... I love these type of photos. Um, I will probably never go into the slot canyons because they just freak me out being in there. So um, why you're afraid you won't I, be able to find your way out or something? It's just no. <laughs> <laughs> I'll blow stuff up. I'm good with that. But you know, climbing in here. Oh come on, fire dancing in there. <laughs> come on, that would be amazing. <laughs> okay, you're right. All right, all right. I'm down for that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you know, I really love this. And I and I looked at this earlier. And one of the things I like about it is the framing of the the top and the bottom of the image and how, you know, it sort of vignettes that that opening. Um, one thing that I would suggest on images like this is a little bit of dodging and burning. And in this case, the dodging is is to vignette those edges a little bit, burn down the foreground rocks lead us through the image to the bright spot. We do that anyway, but in this case, I think the foreground rocks could come down a little bit um, and that would richen up the colors. 
-hmm. but it's okay. it's it's a great image i really like it yeah this kind of image i mean it's abstract obviously and it seems like it'd be amazing this, this one feels like it wants to be big like it wants to be hanging over someone's couch in a frame or something you know i don't know right i know but i i feel like i i want some scale reference in here like i, mm -hmm. I love the image but i feel like i want i don't know i i, I want like a a person in there or or I don't know. I always say that for all these images that are abstract, that I want to see some sort of point of reference so I can have an idea of the, the overall scale of the shot. But, you know, that's completely subjective. Steve Brazel, what say you? I, I kind of agree with both of you. Uh, first of all, I love the image and I'm kind of like Troy. I would love to go in the slot canyons. I don't know how well mentally I would handle <laughs> being in a slot canyon. But this person... What's so scary about the slot canyons? <laughs> 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 but for me, image, that center area uh, leading out, I think the whole image could actually be brought down. Right. I, I think by darkening mm. this and giving me that feeling of claustrophobia, giving me the feeling I'm in a slot canyon and really bringing this down would do two things. It would, again, add impact to the image. But not only that, it would really bring out the colors in this image by, by bringing the exposure down a little bit. That said... There's kind of a natural vignette on the right-hand side. I'd like to see that, like Troy said, mirrored on the other side of the foreground rocks. In fact, there is, I'm pointing at my screen, like, like people know what I mean. <laughs> but there is a ridge in the front that kind of curls. I'd like to see that whole front of that ridge brought down in exposure. And then, mm, like Troy said, right dodge here? and burn is necessary to really lead my eyes out the middle. And then is what you said is true. You want scale. Well, to me, you can bring scale out of this image. This needs to be more pano crop. Bring the top mm. down just a slight hair. Bring the bottom up a fairly good amount, like to the first hole in the rock. Yeah, that above would, that. Above that, that would add some length to it and really, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, no, absolutely. Yeah, and make it a little bit more dramatic. Yeah, this is almost a, what, a four by three crop on this guy? Yeah. yeah, this is like a standard out of camera crop. But picture this, you said something about hang it on the wall big. Could you imagine, bring this down maybe half a stop, uh, maybe even use like a Nick uh, uh, Color Effects Pro detail enhancer or something like that, detail extractor, bring out that deep rock detail and crop it pano. This belongs over a couch. Yeah. And what do you, what do you think? When I was learning photography in the military, one of the things one of the instructors told me about color versus black and white and how to choose because we were shooting film back then, obviously, and, and how to choose which one to shoot in a given situation. And his answer was always, if color doesn't add anything to the scene, get rid of it. Right. So and then so when I look at shots, especially abstract abstract shots like this, I think, would this be better as like a black and white or a high contrast Ansel Adam esque black and white what do you guys think does it need the red tones in there or would it would it be more powerful monochromatic i, I think it could go Troy both says. it could go both ways one of my favorite things about black and white is that it takes the distraction of color out of it and when you yeah, take the exactly. color out then you see all the shapes and the nuances within that image and this image would look exquisite in black and white because then all the striations in the rocks the depth the highlights the little footholds or whatever those are i'm assuming um those things would really pop and we wouldn't be distracted or not distracted but if it was done right though if, well, if this was if this was if you tried to use all 256 shades of gray and it was flat, it's going to die. But if this was had some real nice, rich blacks in it um, and some yeah, nice highlights, yeah. I think it would be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so Howard, play if, you, with. If, if, if Howard, if you're if you're watching this, yeah, do us a favor. And if you can do a black and white version of this i'd love to see a black and white kind of more 16 by 9 cropped version of this and i'd love to see what that looks like right yeah but let's not get uh, past the fact that 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 orangey yellow in the middle you don't have to go black and white on this i mean if you're going to no, do a no. color image this image could definitely use color absolutely absolutely all right let's uh let's move on howard thanks for submitting this into the uh the pro critique channel let's move down to this next image all right this one's not for children but uh <laughs> well it could be for some kids i mean this is not this is not egregiously naughty this is you know this is kind of a sexy dark image when i look at this i think movie scene for some reason i don't know why but yeah, uh it, troy what oh, do you think troy 
Oh, it, it's funny because we were just talking about black and white. And when I first saw this image, I thought of, you know, the noir style. And I thought, man, this would look so good. Bring the exposure down a little bit. Go black and white, a little contrasty. Let the blacks block up a little bit. Um, this would be even a, a little bit darker and a little bit, you know, more mysterious. Um, so I, I, I love this image. I love the look. What, what I would suggest other than that is I think we have a little bit too much of her on the left. I think we could crop that just maybe short of her arms so that we're really seeing the image in the mirror. We know it's her, we can see past her. And then bring down that exposure of her as well on the left side because it is brighter. Um, and then maybe yeah. crop the right side a little bit. Um, if you took an image like this and you flipped it upside down, where are your eyes gonna go? And your eyes going to be attracted to the brightest spot, regardless of the subject. And I think in this case, her back right arm is bright and distracting from her face and the rest of her body. And it would be nice to to see that sort of dodged a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I love this concept, though. I mean, I love any any shot that's actually even even if you know you you have to weave the story in your head a little bit. This one, there's a story here that I can. You know what, what's what's going on in her mind. I think that that adds to it. And Mark, Mark is Mark Harris is the uh, the photographer of this image. He is in the live chat right now, and he's saying that it's it's not that bad in terms of how I introduced it. <laughs> so it's, no, it is not pornographic. It is not. You know, I was being I was being facetious. This is a beautiful image. It is completely PG uh, on this image, and it's awesome. And her uh, her bra and panties are twip red, so that's perfect. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think you were projecting, Frederick. I think that's what was happening there. Isn't well, you that have a new logo that's, that's, now, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have to, Mark, you and I are going to have to talk because this might have to, you know, serve as a twip logo. But thanks for submitting this, Mark. Great, great image. What about you, uh, uh, Steve Brazel? What do you think? Where do you go when you look at this? I, I kind of agree. I think I love the concept. I love this type of a shot, and I love where Mark was going with it. Um, a couple of things I think would just really draw me in more. Um, first of all, kind of like Troy mentioned, we already know it's very clear that that the quote unquote person on the left is her, right? So I think there's just too much of her. Uh, there's so much of her hair on the left that's not needed. I would crop mm -hmm. the top down to almost the top of the mirror. You still know it's her. You can still <clears throat> see the hair. Same with the thigh. Her thigh and yeah. hip are so bright, meaning the 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 one whose back is facing us, the real person, this not right the reflection. Here. Yeah, I yeah. would crop up from the bottom and in from the right and closer to the mirror itself so that she kind of landed more towards the right of the frame, the reflection did. Um, kind of like Troy as well, there's some bright spots I'd bring down to really focus her face. The one thing that keeps hitting me on this image though is that you've got this beautiful model wearing this nice lingerie and kind of in this introspective checking herself out in the mirror. Do I look okay for tonight? I wish I could see her eyes. I wish her head was a little more upright and her eyes were open. It would like just maybe be she's looking at her reflection is looking at the camera. Maybe right. Exactly. <clears throat> if you positioned it like that, it would suck people into this image and just really, really sell it. I, I think those couple of things, the bright spots, the, the too much hip and underwear on the front person, the hair, the side, and have her head just up a little bit more with eyes, you know, thinking open, as it were, not wide open like she's, you know, thinking about school uh, mm -hmm. or work. That's funny because as, as you say that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking, I, I wish that her chin was down, her head was turned towards the light, and that hair was falling in her face. You know, and a little bit, a little bit darker and just hiding her face even more. Totally agree. And that's kind of my point is it's so far to the side. Yeah. It almost looks like she's uncomfortable in a natural, not looking at herself posed. And I, I think it would be more natural if she was looking in the mirror, maybe down wanting or, or her head up, you know, to the, to her right, her left, whatever. Um, To speak to this image, I would also say as, as uh, Steve has mentioned is to crop it from the bottom. But one thing that uh, you can see her knees and you've cropped just below her knees. And that is often odd in a crop. So bringing that up and cropping just above her knees would also help the composition of this, um, taking some space off the top as well, keeping her in thirds, and that would help a lot. And, and Mark actually asked a question in the chat, and that is, what if I cropped on the left and brought down the brightness on her, quote, real body? Hmm. 
I, I think you could yeah, lose some from the left, sure, and bring down the brightness. I think, yeah, I think, oh, yeah. yeah, definitely. I think I agree with you, both of you guys, definitely cropping in because the subject of this is the reflection's face, right? So I agree with her. If she was looking maybe seductively at the camera, chin down a little bit, kind of with a come hither look or something, like, you know, her, come her, her significant look? other. Come hither. Yeah, that's what they used to say in my day. Anyway, oh my so the. <laughs> <laughs> that, so, but if you cropped in a little bit and she's looking at the camera kind of kind of seductively kind of tells a story you know it goes back to that story again you know what's happening this somebody walked in and caught her getting ready and she's looking at them saying hey you know wait a second i'll be right out or something right so yeah you I, just I, brought I up that. the point we all missed actually tell the story yeah. this mm -hmm. is a model posing in front of a camera that change would make it a story yeah 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 i like it though i like it though but yeah and again there's a lot of space that's not needed because uh, in in photography both of you guys know i know i'm speaking preaching to the choir um you want to lose when you're if you're editing a photo whether in camera or out of camera you want to lose as much that doesn't contribute to the overall vision or story right, right so right. when you look at this with through that lens it's like does all that stuff on the left does that really add to the story or can I just suggest that there's a person in the foreground and the real object of the shot is the reflection. So I'm going to crop in a little bit just to show that, that she's there's there's a real person not outside of that's creating that reflection and even the mirror itself. Right. So like if you crop in a little bit and lose her knees, maybe um, and down a little bit, you still know that that's a full length mirror. But this the attention instantly goes more to her face because you lose more of those 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 extraneous items in the frame yeah i Absolutely. totally agree totally yep. agree cool. and and cool. people should know you know if if your feed on this live stream isn't you know crystal clear you can always go into twip pro and look at the images there in the photo critique section absolutely yeah they're they're big and beautiful in there yeah the stream doesn't do these images justice because we're streaming this through a hangout right so it's compressed and then compressed and uncompressed all right okay uh, before, before you do anything else can you do it? me a favor it's the last one yeah no do me do me a favor go into member shots and pull up the one troy put up Ooh, member shots let's go in here troy is uh, cringing uh, right now <laughs> oh this one oh <laughs> Yeah, let's let it load. You can see how my internet connection's acting. Look at that. Can we critique this? Troy Miller, what do you think of this? <laughs> <laughs> what do, okay, give us the background of this, because this is, uh, you talk about a photo that you want to hang in your house. This needs a beautiful black frame on it hanging in my living room. What What's going on here? Um, so I, one of the things I like to do is I like to fabricate. I like to build things out of steel and, and I build furniture and all those kind of things. So I'm always working with torches and grinders and things, and it looks really cool. Um, this is actually, I built a, a piece of tubing and I, and, and don't do this at home. All right. Don't, don't anybody else go try to do this unless you're insane. Um, but this is a piece <laughs> of tubing and I, I'm pumping uh, map gas or propane into this and then I ignite it. And this is the explosion You're that's insane, coming out of the dude. top of the pipe. <laughs> you see how his voice goes down to minimize the impact of what he just said right now? It's, it's like, okay. yeah, I hooked, I hooked flammable gas to some tubing and then I lit it and this is the explosion. Yeah, not a big deal. And then I it's captured a, it in perfect explosion. exposure with my camera and then, you know, and I live to tell about it. Like, well, and that's my question on this. And that's why I wanted you to bring it up is because we were talking about that fire one and how hard it is to expose for fire. This doesn't last very long. So how did you get the exposure nailed on this? How did you know where to go with your exposure before you blew the house up? Uh, I shot hundreds of these. I mean, literally it's a, it's, it's a pop. That's it. That's all that lasts. And it took me a really long time because there's no way to meter it. So it's all manual. So, you know, I started like, okay, I think I want to shoot at 1 25th of a second. What, what ISO do I need? What aperture do I need? How much depth do I need? I mean, literally it just, it, it's trial and error. This is one of those kind of things where you have to play. So you um, have a whole bunch of misses then. Oh, I've got 10,000 of these. I mean, I've shot probably 10,000 of these images and then I get like one keeper per 5,000. 
Um, Which way, when you when you say there's a there's a pop in there, so the this image happens in an instant. Kind of reminds mm-hmm. me of like the Large Hadron Collider, and you're like capturing atoms smashing into each other. But are you are you you have your camera set on a on a tripod, presumably, and you're in a dark room, and you open up the the shutter, and then you create it, or or are you are you actually clicking the shutter to to capture this? Like it feels like feels like this would be like a, like if I was to try to recreate this myself, I'd be in a completely dark room where I can open the shutter up and and make my little explosions over and over again like to try to fireworks. capture it. Exactly like shooting fireworks. Yeah, it's it's a lot like shooting fireworks. Um, there is a background that is lit, so there's this there's this balance with that. There's there's enough light in the room for me to see, so I'm not tripping over everything. The camera is most definitely on a tripod. Um, every single shot, you don't know what you got until you look at the back of the camera because it happens so fast. It's about a second and a half exposure so that I have time to open the shutter, uh, prime the tube with the propane and then click the igniter and then it goes pop and then the shutter closes and I look at it and go, all right, that sucks. I got to do it again. And it's just a, it's a constant and it's, you you can't control it. So you never know what you're going to get. Um, yeah, and that that flame, by the way, that tube is about three inches in diameter, so that that flame is probably eight inches tall. So there's oh, no wow. no context Seriously? of size. Yeah, it's big. Yeah. It's Did, really big. Okay, so here's the here's the safety question of the day. <laughs> yeah, I know where <laughs> you're going. The first time this. you blew this thing up, did you know it was going to go eight inches, or did you go, oh whoa? No, I've blown stuff up before, okay, so cool. I, I knew it was going to. I I have a I have an eye shield. And, um, okay. you know, I have gloves and, and, you know, this is something that I've done in the past being a welder and stuff and going to the desert and blowing things up. I mean, the bottom of the tube is open. So in case, uh, there's no pressure, you know, there's no back pressure. So it's not actually gonna, you know, disintegrate the tubing. The tubing is like a quarter of an inch thick. So, you know, there's no shrapnel or anything, but you know, I'm, I'm safe. You know, there's a fire extinguisher nearby and a cup of tea. So I'm good. No, are you are you giving tutorials or have you kind of detailed the steps on how you did this anywhere where people can go like check it out? I haven't. No. No, I've never <sighs> I've never done that. Uh, I, I I feel a webinar or something coming on me. <laughs> 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 that is fantastic, man. I love it. I love it. Thanks for posting this in there too. Actually, you know, we should go through one of these images on behind the shot one time. You should. Why don't you? That like, would what, be awesome. I can. I already see the title: Map Gas Photography. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you want to accept that liability of everybody else going trying to do it. Yeah. Well, hey, you could just put a disclaimer on there. You know, that's what we. Right. Do. Right. Right. All right, gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for uh, for taking time out of your day to do this. Um, like I said, these these critiques are intended to be kind of quick kind of first impression-esque looks and images that, that TWIP Pro members post in the TWIP Critiques channel. And uh, I think we succeeded. You guys have any closing thoughts, Steve Brazel? Where can people check you out and, and see some of your work? Uh, first of all, closing thoughts. I, I would I love watching these pop up in, in the TWIP Pro. And, and so that you know, if you go to TWIP Pro, you don't have to post a photo in the photo critique section. There's a member shot section where you can just share your shots and not feel like you're going to be critiqued on everything. That's the safe area. And then there's the photo critique. If you've got a shot, you've reworked it three times, you know there's something beautiful in there, but you, you're you too close to it and you can't find it. That's that's this photo critique and put them in there. Um, for me, I'm Steve Brazel everywhere. Same as the country of Brazil, but two L's. Twitter, uh, I'm on constantly. Uh, Instagram, uh, for Facebook, it's actually Steve Brazel Photography. Um, and my website is stevebrazel.com. And of course, the podcast, Behind the Shot, right here on the uh, the TWIP network. You can find it at thisweekinphoto.com. Awesome. Thank you, Steve Brazel. Troy Miller, what about you? When you're not creating wedding images or blowing stuff up, where can people go to check you out? <laughs> uh, you can check out my wedding website, which is imageryconcepts.com or the same name for Instagram. Or if you want to see any of the crazy art stuff that I try to do, that would be on Spicy Jello on Instagram. Um, I love that name. <laughs> um, I would like to add, though, for for those who are who are submitting images for critique, <clears throat> kudos to you. 
it's a brave thing to do to put your work out there for somebody to critique it and look at it and and sort of take it apart and tell you what you did right or wrong and it's hard to take but it's it's such a good learning step and and you know good good for you guys for doing that Absolutely. and by the way cool. steven in the chat room troy said he's on his way to the welding store <laughs> see what you've done i know i know i know <laughs> yeah, this is this is going to be interesting. Yeah, I want to explore more of your work. I remember we were in Vegas and we were you were I think you were showing some of your work on your phone or something and everybody at the table was just blown away like what? except for Renee. Wait, what? I don't, no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what did Renee Robbins say? Steve, okay, since you here you go. Out. <laughs> Troy is this amazing I got to go. I got to go. <laughs> no, you're hanging out for this one. Troy's this amazing wedding photographer and he's showing people his wedding pictures and it happened this fast. It was about as fast as the, the explosion for the map gas. Renee Robbins said, let me see the phone. And he handed her the phone and it was literally this fast. It was, oh, you swapped out the sky. <laughs> just like that. And he just looked at her and went, maybe. No, no, no. Wait. No, wait. If we're going to be fair. And and Robin, if you're you're watching this, I, I I love you dearly, and you have changed my life. You have encouraged me to be better. So this is a good thing. Um, but she not only did she say, "Well, you swapped out the sky, and you did it wrong." I and and I'm like, okay. And then she proceeded to explain to me very kindly about what I did because she is an amazing compositor. So immediately she saw, you know, that maybe the lighting direction was wrong, or I didn't compose. But you know. That's you got to put your stuff out there. Don't be afraid to take a critique. I, I love that story. I think that that's fantastic. And I actually tell that when I when I do lectures and stuff, because you have and to, it's fitting to this to this show. You, you have yeah. to be open to that. And and I will tell you that it has driven me to look at everything that I do a little bit closer, just in case Renee looks at it. <laughs> I love it. I got to tell her that. I'm going to text her that. She's actually in the Twit Pro community as well. We're going to yeah. have to <laughs> let her know that we gave her some kudos in this episode. And and if you haven't cool. seen Renee Robin Photography, I think it's Renee Robin Photography dot com. Oh, man. Go check it out. The girl's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Yeah. She's a she's a compositing wizardess or whatever the. Yeah, she's very good at compositing and photography and modeling and teaching and on and on and on and on. So, all right, gentlemen, that's it for TWIP Pro Critique number two. Uh, I think it's time to take that lens cap off. This is TWIP.